fun is they're pulling uh, the core catcher off and then they're going to pull out the core liner from the core barrel. The core liner is that plastic tubing that fits inside the metal core barrel and uh, holds the, the core. We replace those each, each time we take a new core. So here comes the core catcher. You can see that's the very bottom most portion of each core that, that's drilled. The material in there is the oldest uh, material from that core. There will be a paleontologist at the ready to receive the very bottom section of that uh, core so they can try to determine the age, the maximum age of that core. And as we progress into the hole, they can uh, uh, keep us up to date on uh, how old we're getting, which uh, is very important to perhaps how deep we're going to go. You know, dating a continent is a pretty complicated thing to do because what, what do you date? You need to know what you're dating. So. Um, we, we could say it's very, very old, as old as Gondwana, since it was a part of Gondwana. But then what happened? And, and I think that's the whole point of this voyage. What happened during the 60 million years, that last 60 million years? And that we don't really know. It, it seems some things happened, and we're here to find out what. Yeah, we need to, to find um, marker species, so we know the, the range they occur through time, and then we record the currents in the core catches. Change of certain species or genus or families of a, of a fossil, like it might be a nano, nano fossil, like a coccolith, or might be a foraminifer. So the change from one species to another is, um, or, or maybe the range, that, bring, that that's, talks about the change in time, how their evolution is occurring. So that is the scale we use, it's, it's called biostratigraphy. In order to determine the age of the sediment, the scientists search for six fossil groups. Foraminifera, calcareous nanofossils, radiolarians, organic-walled dinoflagellite cysts, palinomorphs, ostracods. So there's six fossil groups on the ship, and there is kind of a hierarchy of who gets the age first. Um, not all the fossil groups are used to tell age, um, only a few. Others are used to tell paleo depth, so how deep the water was at any point in time. But the first ones to get age are usually the calcareous nanofossils. These are super, super tiny little fossils. When the nanofossil workers get a piece of sediment, they just kind of smear it out on a glass slide and there can be thousands to millions of fossils within any one slide. So they usually get aged first from any core catcher. So I'm interested in look, generating a long-term, low-resolution sea surface temperature record from the Miocene to the present. Um, so I'm sort of sailing undercover because that's not quite the primary scientific objective of the cruise. Here's a picture of a foraminiferal ooze. Um, these are single-celled calcareous microorganisms that um, live in the photic zone, and they um, die, rain down onto the seafloor, and generate the sediments that we look at. So um, we take a little smear of the material, put it under a glass slide, and look at it through this petrographic microscope to quantify the various components that is in the sediment. In smear slide, we see that there's a lot of calcareous nanofossils, and so that's the, the dominant factor in, in all of the smear slides. Um, but also within these smear slides, we find some forams, and they range anywhere between uh, abundant to rare. Um, and interestingly, in this slide, uh, we found what we think is a uh, pollen. So it's the only one we found so far, but... <laughs> the discovery of pollen from land plants reveal that the geography and climate of Zealandia were dramatically different in the past. The planktic foraminifera worker, so like what I do, it takes us a bit longer um, to get age from any core catcher. So we have to go through a more complicated process. It takes a bit longer to process our samples. Um, so we have to wash the sediment, we have to dry the sediment, um, and then we have to sieve it in a little sieve, um, and then we look at the entire assemblage that's there and pick out fossils.
the nanofossil workers don't really have to pick out fossils, they're just noting what's there because they're too small, you can't do that. The JR operates as a floating research vessel. It is equipped with a lab for the paleontologists and a fully functional chemistry lab. Geochemists study water extracted from the core, as well as search for another type of fossil. I study uh, organic world dinoflagellate cysts, and that, uh, that might not mean uh, a lot to you, but um, they are uh, these little uh, plankton that live in the surface ocean, and I try to uh, get them uh, out of the sediment to be able to, uh, to date uh, the sediments. After I take my sample, the first thing I do is I use uh, strong acids to dissolve all of the other fossils that are in there, to dissolve all of the other minerals so that I'm just left with the uh, organic material, since my fossils are, are made from uh, organic material. I, uh, I sift the sample so that I don't have the really tiny stuff in there and I don't have the really big stuff in there, but I'm just left with uh, the fossils that I want to look at, basically. And finally, when, I, uh, when I'm left with just the fossils I want to look at, then I, uh, I put them on this little uh, glass microscope slide. And I, uh, I study that under, uh, under this uh, light microscope. When I'm looking at, uh, at the slide under the microscope, then I, uh, I try to look for different species. So I try to, uh, to find species that are specific for a certain age. But also I try to find species that are uh, specific for certain habitats to uh, reconstruct maybe how, uh, how warm it was, uh, how salty the water was, things like that. All together we work as a team. So it's really important that we're um, talking constantly in the lab when we're together. For example, if the nanofossil worker is getting an age and maybe I'm a sample or two behind, which is kind of normal when you have cork coming up so fast. I'm still talking with her, him or her, but what I'm seeing and confirming the age, or maybe I'm seeing something weird, maybe they're seeing something weird, so we always have to be in communication. <laughs>